Alright, this will be great. As soon as I spot the lizard, I'll let you go, and then you'll go flying after him. And I can grab that mystery lizard as I fly by. I should have activated bear powers or something strong. Uh, you see the lizard? Not yet. Could be a while. Oh, there he is! Whoa! Whoa! Ah! It's, it's, it's a... Cactus! Oh. Mommy! Chris, what are you doing up there? The mystery lizard is getting away! I'm kind of stuck. Oh, yeah. Here, let me get you down. Wait, wait, care ow, ow, careful! Oh, great, I'm in the middle of a tug of war between my brother and a saguaro cactus. <laughs> oh. We can't give up. But that mystery lizard is so fast. I don't know if anything out here can catch him. Shh, there he is. He's a, he's a Roadrunner! Road Whoa, look at them go! The Roadrunner's gaining. Oh no, we have to find another mystery lizard. Wow. I never realized a roadrunner is as big as a chicken and twice as fast. I gotta see that again. Okay, roadrunner, show us your stuff. On your marks, get set, run! Uh, run! Go, race off! Uh, roadrunners don't listen very well. Speedometer, we need a speedometer! Whoa, 42 kilometers an hour! That makes the Roadrunner one of the fastest running birds in the world. Oh, and check out that aerodynamic running posture. But with his head down, he's not running with his head out. I don't think he can see where he's going because he's running right into a cactus. <laughs> of course, we should have seen that coming. A Roadrunner can fly, but he just prefers to run most of the time. Oh, I love how the Roadrunner uses vantage points, like cactus or rocks, to perch and scan for prey. And then when he spots something, he runs off after it. Oh, and what a great creature power that would be to have. Could you imagine? Roadrunner powers. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, brother? Oh yeah, I'm thinking what you're thinking. We convince Aviva to secretly make us Roadrunner powers, then use them to catch up with the mystery lizard, and get back to the Tortuga before Koki even knows she was gone. Yes! Hey, Chris, what's up? Shh, not so loud. Oh, hey, Chris, why are we whispering? Uh, so we don't startle this awesome Roadrunner. Uh, you should probably whisper too. Hey, why don't you come out here and check out this Roadrunner? It is the fastest running bird in North America. Oh, and don't forget, never go anywhere without your mobile invention kit. What? Why would I bring my mobile invention kit? We're getting ready to leave, remember? Well, uh, a, a good inventor is always prepared. Yeah, okay, fine. Where are you guys? We're right over here at the saguaro cactus. Oh, cactus. Which one? The one with the Roadrunner on it. Oh, okay, I'll be right there. I mean, I'll be right there. Aviva, you gotta see this bird. You got here pretty fast, what? but this bird can run even faster. Faster than any two-legged creature out here. Meet the super speedy birdie, the Roadrunner. Nice to meet you. Hey, what's he doing that for? Because he's curious. But get ready for what he's famous for. Running! Check out that stretched out pose. Look at those legs move. He is some impressive sprinter. Aren't Roadrunner Power spectacular? So, Aviva, would you love programming a Roadrunner Power disc or what? Yeah, how about it, Aviva? You think you can just make us a Roadrunner Power suit real quick? Yeah, but Koki's all ready to leave. Oh, with a super speedy Roadrunner suit, we could identify that mystery lizard in no time. Yeah, he's definitely the one. Well, to be sure, 
We've got to see those holes he's making up close and make sure they match. Yes, we've got to follow the suspect and catch him in the act. Well, go ahead then, but I'm telling you, he did it. Pull that woodpecker! Spy gear ready? Surveillance monitor ready. All are ready. 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 Let's go. Let the spy mission begin. Hey, where'd Chris go? Activate raccoon power. Thanks, buddy. For the ninja spy power of the raccoon. Clever, crafty creatures of the forest. Sounds like he's that way. Okay, I'm in close. Suspect climbing tree. Uh-huh. He uses those special toes, two in the front, two in the back to help with climbing. And the stiff tail feathers brace against the trunk for support. Thanks, Chris. Keep the data coming. So, is he drilling yet? Not yet, but those features are keys to drilling. <gasps> Martin, you in position? He's heading your way. The woodpecker has landed. Oh, yes, he's doing it. He's drilling. Wow, that's fast. His head's a blur. Wow, that's 16 woodpecker pecks a second. Impressive. <laughs> I'm going to call him Headbanger. Look at the wood chips fly. I knew it. I told you. How much evidence do you need? This woodpecker must be drill happy or something. He's just drilling holes everywhere. Hang on, Aviva, not so fast. Something's not right. The holes look different. Yeah, this hole looks different. Hmm. It's bigger, more rectangular. Not like those smaller round holes in the dying trees. Well, if you guys need more evidence, go ahead. But to me, it's case closed. When you're ready to admit that I was right about this guy, you can find me back at the Tortuga. With an analysis of this feather, maybe I'll even have another suit by the time you guys are done. Hey, wait for me! Okay, Chris. Headbanger stopped off at a dead tree. Maybe it's hideout. I'm going in. Nice digs. So this is one of the things you could build with that drilling power. A cozy, safe nest in a dead tree to hide out from bad weather and predators. Oh, and I can see why so many animals use your nest when you're done with it. Wood ducks, bats, lots of birds, raccoons, even squirrels, especially in winter. What? Uh-oh, a pine martin. Oh no, up here, the nest is safe for most predators, but not from that tree-loving weasel. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, go, oh, oh, no, duh. Yes, <laughs> an exit hole. Oh, pileated woodpeckers build multiple entrances and escapes. Brilliant. Uh-oh. Uh, pine martins are squirrel hunters too. Bye. Oh, how? Go to your read me. I'm here, Martin, over. Mayday, mayday, I'm being chased. Pick me up in the getaway bike, hurry. Being chased? By who, Martin? A Martin. Martin? Wait, you're Martin. You're chasing yourself? No, this Martin is. What? Where? No, he wants to eat me. <laughs> hurry. Martin wants to eat you? <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! 64 kilometers per hour! Mountain Lion Sprint Speed! Uh oh. Yikes! We're looking a lot like fleeing prey right now, Chris! And a 9 meter leap is no problem! For a mountain lion! Whoa! Ow! Ow! At least we avoided those sharp claws! Whoa! Cactus spines? Oh, they're sharp too! Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We might find out which is sharper. 
Uh, cactus spines? <gasps> or mountain lion claws? Oh, hi, Spotted Skunk. Sorry we bumped into your home. And even more sorry, we brought her. Ooh, the skunk foot stop warning. He's tiny, but tough. A one kilogram creature telling a 50 kilogram wildcat to back off. Now that's impressive. A handstand? Hey, nothing like a little gymnastics to ease a tense situation. Anything but, he's puffed up to look bigger and tougher, showing the warning black and white colors. He's saying, last chance before I... Ooh, skunked! That was a direct hit! From three and a half meters away, what aim, what precision. And that mountain lion is not happy. He's out of here! Skunk stink defense, it's genius! Whoa, that's bad. <laughs> like, let's get out of here, bad. Quick! <laughs> we owe you one, buddy. <laughs> Yuck. Hey, you. my bubble bot with so many distractions. Who is it anyway? Wildcrats? Calling me? Hmm. Interesting. Varmatech Industries turning varmints into robotic solutions. Zach Varmatech, head genius speaking. Hello? Hello? Ah! <laughs> Did you see that dirty, dusty desert? Yuck! I hate the outdoors. With this bubble bot, I won't have to get dirty anymore when I'm collecting varmints for my robot inventions. What? Ah! Ew! Shoo! Shoo! Get away from that! Yuck! Now that's a dirty varmint. But no crap brother in sight. Hmm, just leaving their stuff in the desert? A hover bike? An animal pod thingy? Someone might steal it. Like, uh, me! <laughs> Get my jet ready. We're going to the desert! No sign of them. They probably got lost again. Wouldn't surprise me. Cookie, look. We've been here in the Sonoran Desert for so long, the long-nosed leopard lizards are starting to think the tortuga is a rock formation. You can live with us forever if you want. Jimmy, can you try calling Chris and Martin? In a minute. Mmm, pickles and cheese. Now that's a sweet-smelling combo. Huh? A kitty cat! Hey, who got the kitty? 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 Kitty witty, cutie cute. Oh, you dance! Da la da 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 la la da la la da 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 da. <laughs> you even do tricks! Hey, who trained this cat? Jimmy, what cat? This one. Coochie 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 coo. Coochie 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 coo. <gasps> Jimmy, that's not a cat. It's a skunk. A what? Hmm? Run! Ah! <gasps> A hero <hue> monster! <gasps> Incoming creature alert! Coming from right here in the Sonoran Desert! Wildcrats, come in! It's me, Javier! There's a Gila monster under my house, and I'm scared. A Gila monster? A Gila monster? Yeah, he's sitting under my porch and won't go away. What do I do? Hang on, Javier. We'll be right there. But, but we were just leaving the Sonoran Desert. We have to get resupplied. There's a Wildcrats kid afraid of a really cool creature. We've got to straighten this out. And plus, there's still a lot for us to learn about Gila monsters. Your mission to learn the truth about the misunderstood Gila monster. There's a Gila monster under my house, and I'm scared. 
There's a Gila monster under my house, and I'm scared. There's a Gila monster under my house, and I'm scared. There's a Gila monster under my house, and I'm scared. What? It's those wild rats. Hmm. Let's see where they're going. Zackbot, put a tail on them. Huh? I didn't mean literally. Put a tail on them means follow them and spy on them. Martin, Chris, over here. Hey, Javier, you okay? Yeah, but I'm glad you're here. Where's the heel monster? R right under there. Whoa! My grandfather told me that if a Gila monster bites you, it won't let go until the sun goes down. Well, it's true that Gila monsters have a very powerful bite and jaw strength like a power wrench. Aha! Jaw strength like a power wrench? But even a Gila monster doesn't hold on to a bite all day. There are a lot of misunderstandings and myths about the Gila monster. And you are lucky enough to have one living under your porch so you can get to know the real Gila monster. Jaw strength like a power wrench? Hmm. And the boys said they'll hold on till the sun goes down. <gasps> I've just had another brilliant idea! I'm going to produce a line of Gila monster power wrenches and sell them in hardware stores all over the world and make billions of dollars! <laughs> And this is what my Gila Monster power wrenches will look like. Now I just need Gila Monsters. Okay, a Gila Monster is nobody to be scared of. For starters, a Gila Monster spends 95% of his life just resting in the entrance of a burrow. And you are just about the luckiest kid in the Sonoran Desert because this Gila Monster has chosen your porch as his burrow. I don't want a Gila Monster under my porch. Uh, okay. How about this? Gila monsters are one of the few venomous species of lizards in the world with a poisonous bite. But their venomous bite is a defensive bite. Gila monsters just like to hang out and be left alone. Nah. I'm telling you, Javier, Gila monsters are so cool. I don't want a Gila monster under my porch. Oh, this is gonna be a tough nut to crack. I know. He is a big lizard. And to a little kid like Javier, he must look scary. But if we were littler than him, and we weren't scared, then maybe he wouldn't be scared either. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, bro? I think so. The miniaturizer? You got it, buddy. And we're gonna get mini size and go into your porch and prove to you that humans don't need to be afraid of Gila monsters. All right, let's go visit a Gila monster. Be careful. You said he's got a venomous bite. He doesn't want to bite anyone. He just wants to be left alone and asleep in his burrow. Wow, look at that color. Most Gila monsters are orangey peach and black, swirled together into really cool patterns. And that color is a bright warning, letting other animals know that this Gila monster has a toxic bite so they don't mess with them. <gasps> Uh-oh. A, a bobcat. bobcat! The Gila monster's sleeping. A wild cat can take advantage of that. Wake up, wake up! Whoa, Gila monster held him off. Cool. The Gila monster is a creature who makes peach a tough color. Ew, what kind of monster is peach color? I'll just paint my Gila monsters to be more red and tough looking. That's better. So you see, a Gila monster can be tough and does have a venomous bite, but having one under your house is nothing to worry about. Yeah, I guess I am kind of lucky. No, I'm really lucky. You've led me to my next big thing, Zach's Gila monster wrenches. Now I just need the Gila monsters to power them. Let's collect some wow facts on these frogs. Be right there. Hi, guys. Whoa, whoa, that was fast. So, where are the frogs? Well, everywhere. But here's the thing. Every time we take a step, a frog launches into the water. They're a little tricky to get a hold of. 
That's because bullfrogs have a highly sophisticated, highly developed anti-predator evasion system. Legs that leap. And if you can't catch them, join them! <laughs> <laughs> well, from first observation, one thing is obvious. The secret is in the length of those legs. Check it out. A frog's hind legs are twice as long as its entire body. This creature is designed for jumping. Hey, where'd he go? I was just behind him and then he was gone. If I take another step, this bullfrog will jump. And then you can find the answer to your question. Okay, one, two, three, ready! <gasps> wow! He doubled back! And I think I know why. It's those bass. The frog jumps into the water for safety, but he can't go deep because big fish will eat him. So he cuts back and heads to the shallows. That's how he stays away from land predators and fish predators at the same time. Hey, you two gotta get in here and check this out. Ribbit. Ribbit. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> We've still got some things to learn about frog powers. Tell me about it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's ready. Whoa, cool boat. Okay, let's race. Look at it sail! Uh oh! Spotless! Remember, I want this plane spotless! Spotless! <laughs> Cleaner! Faster! You got black goop all over my black sweater! Clean this mess up and get it off my plane! And that same leg motion that the frog uses for leaping is also used for swimming. Recoil and push. Never thought about it that way before. Recoil and push. The frog stroke. I've got what I need to get started on programming the bullfrog powers. Ah, <sighs> now this will be a simple creature power suit, because frog power is all in the legs. Finally, a nice, relaxing day of invention. No complications. Did you hear that? Over there. Whoa! This is one monster bullfrog, as big as they get. And if you're a kilometer away, you can hear a big frog like him ribbit. Uh, I'd call it more of a baroop. It's a ribbit. Baroop. Oh, he's not going anywhere because this is the best spot in the pond. Yeah, the water is warmest here, and warm water makes a bullfrog ribbit. Baroop. Deeper. A deeper sounding ribbit is more attractive to female bullfrogs. And that's why he's barooping in the first place to attract females. Mm. Wait, I know what that sounds like. Not really a ribbit or a baroop. It sounds like a tuba. And that's what I'm gonna name you, tuba. Hey, it worked. Here comes a female frog. Uh-oh, correction. That's not a female frog. That's another male bullfrog. He wants to claim tuba's spot. Oh, Tuba doesn't want to give it up. We're heading for a bullfrog bash. Whoa, way to go, Tuba! All right, so while everybody preps to modify the Tortuga for swimming capabilities, let's find the sea turtle that can show us exactly what to do. Yeah, and the first sea turtle we find, no matter what kind it is, that's the one we follow. It's a plan! Wow, a coral reef! There must be a sea turtle around here somewhere. And a lot of other creatures. Don't get distracted, bro. But there's something I want to check out over here. 
I say don't get distracted, and then what does he do? <gasps> A sea, sea turtle. turtle! But what kind? Can't tell. We've got to get closer. Whoa, there he goes! He's fast and nervous. I wonder why. Well, we've got to figure out a way to get close to that sea turtle. Hmm. Hey, I know. Sea turtles eat jellyfish, right? So we could hang around pretending to be jellyfish. Well, two problems with that, bro. Not all species of sea turtles like jellyfish. And two, you don't look anything like a jellyfish. Yeah, I guess you're right. We don't have jellyfish powers yet. But what about this? Why don't we miniaturize down and hide in the reef so a sea turtle won't see us, and then she'll swim right on by. Nice. <gasps> Wait a sec. We can't leave the miniaturizer there activated. <laughs> Any animal could mess with it. Yeah, we've done that way too many times before. Ah, that's better. Okay, Crab Brothers. So, what have you got on the sea turtles? Uh, that they can be kind of hard to find. Where are you guys? We're right here. Just miniaturized and hiding. But it's not really working. Yeah, we still haven't found that sea turtle. Well, we kind of need a sea turtle to show us how to retrofit the Tortuga with swim mode. Hey, let's head up there and get a better view. <gasps> oh -ho! A grouper! <gasps> Swim for it, bro! <gasps> I already am! <laughs> Martin, in here! <laughs> ah! Whew! That was close! What is this place? <gasps> huh? Not what is this place? What is this thing? It's alive. Ooh. <gasps> it's eating little creatures that float into it. We're inside of some kind of animal. We're inside a sponge. A sponge? What does a sponge have to do with animals? A sponge is an animal. Will it eat you? I don't know. But we can't stick around to find out. Ah! Oh, yes we can. What is going on out there? Is it the grouper? Maybe he's attacking the sponge. Well, I'm not going out there to find out. You go. Me? No way, dude. You do it. Okay. Well, here's one way to find out. Deploy fish cam. Great idea, bro. Okay. I'm receiving a picture feed from the fish cam. Ah, but it's fuzzy. Wait, wait. It's something big. It's unclear. Is that a mouth? What kind of animal eats sponges? We're about to find out. Uh, I'm getting a pretty clear picture right here, bro. It's a hawksbill turtle. And of course, the hawksbill sea turtle's favorite food are sponges. Oh yeah, rhino powers. Elephant powers are so awesome. I can do push-ups with my nose. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Save it, brother. It's a sumo-style showdown of strength. Whoever pushes the other guy into the mud wallow wins. You're on! Oh, I am so sick and tired about hearing how awesome those creature power suits are. Oh, I know. Last time I got my hands on the Hippodile disc, I found a flaw in Aviva's programming. And now I've invented something that will prove once and for all that I am a better inventor than Aviva! Zach's Disruptobots, get in there and make me some mayhem! 
All right, bro, the moment of truth. Let's find out who's the strongest. Rhino power! Elephant power! Excellent. My disruptor bots will make their creature power suits go haywire. Won't Chris and Martin be surprised? An elephant is so strong, he can push a 15-meter-tall acacia tree over with his head. Oh! Rhinos have charge strength powerful enough to push over a four-ton truck! Whoa. Hey, Chris, you look thirsty. Oh, yeah. How about a drink? And elephant powers win! <laughs> Woo! Not so fast, bro! Yeah! <gasps> you forgot about the rhino horn! Huh? <laughs> Whoa! Ow! 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 Woo! Yeah! Huh? Oh, yeah, the tip of my nose is more powerful than the tip of your nose. <laughs> A slam dunk into the mud puddle will prove that elephant powers rule over rhino powers. <laughs> Disrupt now. Leaping lizards. I'm an acorn? Aviva, the creature power suits are going crazy! <gasps> oh no! Ah! Oh! Ah! Ah! Ooh, the basilisk's water running feet don't work too well in the dry grassland! Ah! Whoa! I can't grow here, if I even wanted to. Whoa! Martin, quick, deactivate me! Elephants are omnivores, they'll eat nuts! Good thing basilisks are climbers! <laughs> On any kind of trunk! Whoa! No! <laughs> well, that was kind of nuts. <laughs> Loving it! My turn, finally! Okay, so there's a father and two teenage monkeys, but no sign of a mother. Okay, now this isn't fair. You make me come on a swing with the spider monkey adventure, and now I can't even look. But I don't even see a mother or a baby. Here, let me see. I'll find a baby spider monkey. Come on, bro, gimme! Martin, you're more annoying than a mosquito. Uh, Chris, I think I found them. Knock it off, Martin. I'm not giving you the binoculars. Chris, help! I'm being monkey napped! Uh-oh. Aviva, come in. Martin's been monkey-napped and taken into the realm of the spider monkeys where humans can't climb. Monkey-napped? I've heard of cat-napped, kidnapped, but never monkey-napped. How can a human get kidnapped by a monkey? Martin is bug-sized, remember? Uh-oh. Let's go. them. I might be able to get up there, but those spider monkeys can move through the treetops like the ultimate acrobats. I can't keep up with them. How about buzz bikes? Oh, yeah! Well, this is one way to keep up with the spider monkeys. It's amazing how these monkeys can brachiate, just swinging arm over arm. 
Arm swinging is as easy for them as walking is for us. Huh? Huh? <laughs> uh, hello to you too. Wow, are you cute. How old are you anyway? Hmm, only five months old. Tell them from how you're starting to arm swing around on your own. <laughs> yep, I thought so. Whoa, whoa. Uh, I think you spider monkeys might possibly be the best climbers we've ever encountered. Ah! You're welcome. Oh, <gasps> Unknown canopy bug. Whoa. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. Whoa! I can't let that bug get away. I think it's an undiscovered species that only lives in the highest treetops and never ventures below. Oh, okay, you win. Spider monkey adventure it is. Did Chris put you up to this? And I think I got a name for you, Grabsy. should be right below us somewhere. Although due to the thick cover of vegetation, it is difficult to get a precise reading. Let's go in there. I'm with ya. Take evasive maneuvers. Mayday, mayday. Whoa! I tend to stick to inventing. Better. Okay, fine. Have it your way. Jeez, what I put up for in the quest for creature knowledge? Your fingers are so long and thin and your thumb is... Wait, you don't have a thumb. Spider monkeys don't have thumbs. Your hand is a natural hook. Hook hands. That's a great feature for arm swinging. Oh, got a text to Viva. I just got a text from Martin. He says, hi, Aviva. Make sure you put hook hands with long fingers that hook onto branches into the spider monkey power suit. Oh, and there's no thumb, so it doesn't get in the way when we arm swing. Thanks, Martin. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Aviva, may I remind you, we're in a tangle of vines 30 meters above the forest floor. Oh, yeah. Not for long. Keep talking so we can get a fix on your location. You know, this isn't fair. I'm the climbing brother, and here I am, stuck in a tangle of vines, and Martin is off swinging through the treetops with the spider monkeys. Ow! Gotcha. Uh-oh. Guess who? Danita Donata. Endangered animal fashion designer. What is she doing here? Oh, let's see. Looking for sea snake belts, or clownfish earrings, or who knows what. But definitely something not very nice to creatures. We'll go check it out. Yeah, we're already wet, so we'll sneak up from bottom side and find out what she's up to. Good luck. Thanks. <gasps> Quick, hide. There's nowhere to go. Let's go mini size. Super tiny. There. Now, pretend you're a piece of floating sea scum. Uh, you be the sea scum, I'll be a bubble. Nope. No fishies here, Danita. It worked. They didn't see us. Hey, Chris. But we're not the only little guys down here. Check it out. We're in a crowd of plankton. <laughs> awesome. I've always wanted to be a part of the plankton, the basis of all sea life. Oh, there are creatures that spend their whole lives floating around here, like amphipods, and millions upon billions of baby fish the size of a pinhead. Imagine that, spending the entire first part of your life just floating around in the open sea in a plankton swarm. It's a giant floating nursery for baby fish. <laughs> 
Hey, cute blobby buddy. Hey, this guy looks like he's old enough to leave the plankton soon. <laughs> You're a little underwater blimp. <gasps> I'll name you Blimpy. But what kind of fish are you anyway? I don't recognize you yet. Where will he live when he leaves the plankton? Earth to crap, brothers. Come in, tiny brothers. Woo! Distracted much? Oh, 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 sorry. Got sidetracked in this plankton. It's like outer space in the sea. Come on, you gotta figure out what Danita is doing here. We're on it! Whoa! Whoa! It's a rip current! We're getting sucked into it! Whoa! Whoa! I'm swimming forward, but going backward! Chris, the miniaturizer. We need to get big to beat this thing. Uh-oh, there goes the miniaturizer. We're part of the plankton now. Well, Blimpy knows where he's going. Yeah, we're sticking with you, buddy. But you do realize we could be going anywhere, right? We could end up completely lost. Oh, Aviva Koki, you gotta find us. Just look for this kind of fish. Hey, what kind is it? We don't know yet, but it looks like this. Got it? Just follow that fish. No, no, we didn't get it. Run! No! They're out of range. <sighs> yeah, somewhere in 17 quadrillion gallons of seawater. Ocean currents take plankton all over the world for thousands upon thousands of kilometers. They could end up anywhere. We'll never find them. But we've got to. Yes, that greenish film. That's the plankton. We can't let it out of our sight. But what about Zanita? We can't let her out of our sight either. If we lose the plankton, we might lose the guys. Forever. Kick it, Jimmy. Follow that plankton. <laughs> On it. Are we there yet? Where? Uh, anywhere but in the middle of the ocean? Ah. Nope. Plankton trail shifting a little to the left, JC. Rightio. I mean, leftio. Got it. There are thousands of different kinds of fish larvae in plankton. How am I ever going to figure out what kind of fish that little blimpy guy is? Type in blimpy guy? Hmm. That's it. That's what must give him those unique flying powers of the hummingbird. Exactamente. The figure eight pattern pushes air away in all four directions. That's what enables him to float in the air, hovering. <gasps> His flying is out of this world. Hey, that's it. Out of this world flying. Spaceship. That's what I'm going to name you. Spaceship. <gasps> he can even fly upside down. OK, Spaceship, now you're just showing off. <laughs> but it makes perfect sense, because with that figure eight wing beat pattern, Hovering upside down is almost as easy as hovering right side up. Okay, I'm getting to work on this one. Okay, then it's settled. Today, we'll master hummingbird powers. And it's gonna be so easy to touch a hummingbird. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's gonna be simple. I'll show you. Ugh. Ow, hold still. Watch it. Hey. Uh, you might want to work that out, so you can actually touch a hummingbird by the time Aviva finishes the hummingbird power disc. Uh, just a minor setback. Uh, yeah, we forgot to adjust our reflexes for hummingbird action. Uh-huh. Good luck catching up with little flying saucer from Hover Birdie Galaxy, or whatever you've named him this time. Hey, spaceship, wait up! We need you! Maybe I should have named him after something easier to touch. Something tells me that that teeny tiny little birdie is a much bigger challenge than the brothers bargained for. Well, they better figure out how to touch the hummingbird because hummingbird powers are increíble. Look at this. This is a regular bird wing. In most birds, the wing is made of arm bones. This is a hummingbird wing. The hummingbird wing is made of hand bones. And see? 
that's what enables that figure eight wing beat and hovering powers. This might be my most awesome creature power suit yet. That is if the rose can touch a hummingbird. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, whew. It's a little trickier setting up my mobile restaurant in the treetops. Just enough to work up an appetite. I need a little bite of something, something to boost my energy levels. Huh? Well, hello. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Don't you want to stay for dinner? <laughs> Spaceship has landed in a patch of Heliconia flowers. Well, not landed, actually. Hovered. A hummingbird almost always hovers when it eats. Spaceship is sipping nectar from flowers. A clear, sugary liquid called nectar is what gives the hummingbird his energy. He spends most of his time drinking that sugary water so he can get enough energy for his high-action flying. In fact, a hummingbird has to drink nectar every 10 minutes or so, or else he won't be able to fly. Hey, that's it. While he's busy sipping nectar, that's when we can touch him. I'm on it. Launching zipline. We'll show Koki that we can touch a hummingbird. Go ahead. I'm watching. Hmm. Zipline lock and ready for zipping. While Spaceship is busy sipping nectar, we'll just zip by and touch him before he can even react. <laughs> right behind you, bro. Oh, almost had him. Keep going, bro. We'll get him this time. Yeah. Uh oh, so close. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Huh? Spaceship's too quick for us. This is getting embarrassing. And it's gonna be so easy to touch a hummingbird. So easy to touch a hummingbird. So easy, so easy, so easy. It's gonna be simple. It's gonna be simple. So easy, simple. So easy, simple. It's gonna be simple, simple. We'll show you. <laughs> okay, okay. Touching a hummingbird might be a little more challenging than anticipated. But with a little help from our other animal friends. Oh, yeah. Fight creature powers with other creature powers, I always say. And besides, that hummingbird has got to rest sometime. Good luck. Aha! A hummingbird. Now that little bird has some delicious energy. <laughs> oh, who are you? You are so cute, whoever you are. I love spring. Warm air, green grass, flowers like buttercups and dandelions, and fluffy, cute little baby animals. Is that what you want your name to be? Dandelion? <laughs> Dandelion it is. Hello, everyone. Hope you're enjoying this gorgeous spring day. And guess what? I've been inspired by something wonderful, and I'm going to make a new creature power suit. <gasps> what? Ooh. Really? A new creature power suit? Okay, so what creature powers do you have in mind, Aviva? Yeah, where is this super-powered mystery creature? Uh, he's right in front of you. Huh? Hmm. Oh, you. You mean a groundhog? And groundhog powers? I mean, he is impossibly cute. But besides cutting a really nice lawn, what kind of super cool power does a groundhog have? What are you talking about? He's perfect. Don't get us wrong. We love groundhogs. I'm just not sure if a groundhog is a creature that really inspires a creature power suit. Well, I'm sure groundhogs have some hidden superpower that is so amazing. Don't you have an amazing superpower? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, we could try. I mean, Aviva is really into groundhogs. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe, possibly, somehow, there's some cool ability to make a groundhog power suit. <gasps> that must be Dandelion's mom. Okay, let's get creature adventuring. 
Weight, four kilograms. Body temperature, 37 degrees. Just like us. Heartbeat, 90 beats per minute. And she eats and eats and eats. <laughs> Groundhogs eat so much grass each day, enough to fill up a sink. But I don't think that's a talent that makes for a good creature power suit. Huh? Okay, hey. thanks, Chris. Those groundhog basics are just what I need to get a groundhog power suit started. Have a nice breakfast, dandelion. I'll be back soon. Ah, it is really cool how a groundhog digs a burrow into a field and then grazes out from the burrow entrance. A groundhog rarely eats grass more than three and a half meters from its burrow. So whenever she senses a predator, she can quickly escape to the safety of her burrow. The burrow! Ha. Hey, that's something. Groundhogs are great diggers. See, the burrow is usually dug under a pile of rocks or tree roots. There's a drop down right after the entrance, then a long tunnel that opens up to a chamber. There can also be a special hibernation chamber and then other escape entrances and exits. And a groundhog does all that digging herself. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I don't know if it's enough to make a great creature power suit, but at least it's something for Aviva to start with. Hey, Aviva, we've got something here. Groundhogs are great diggers. A groundhog will dig a burrow complex that looks something like this. And a single groundhog can dig the whole thing in just a couple days. Perfecto, that's great. So what else do they do? What other special abilities and talents? Give me more groundhog info, and I'll have something ready for you to test out soon. You wear it. No way, you wear it. Uh, Viva, because you're so excited about groundhogs and can't wait to see groundhog powers, making one groundhog power suit will give Chris the chance to test the power suits out right away. That's a great idea, Martin, but not really fair to you. You two should flip for it, and winner is the lucky one who gets to test the groundhog power suit. Uh-huh. Even though groundhogs are super awesome animals, I really don't want to wear a groundhog power suit. Neither do I. What? Want to? You guys don't want groundhog powers? Well, Dandelion and I are insulted. But if you don't want to test groundhog powers, then we will. Activate creature powers. Oh, they're defending their home. From who? Why? Guys? Come on, what do you say? This is the only hippo disc we have, so it's a valuable one, and we haven't used it much yet. I'll do it! Nice doing business with you, bro. I'll put my new platypus power disc right here with my bat power in the senses section. Hey, wait a second. That's my bat power disc. No, this one's mine. Yours is probably somewhere in your pile. No, I put it right there, and now it's gone. Hand it over. Look, I don't know where your disc went, but this isn't it. It is too. It is not. Is too. Is not. Is too. <gasps> Oops. Oh. Aviva, hippo disc on the loose. Save it. <gasps> no. Incoming. Oh, I'll get that runaway disc with Peregrine Falcon power. Activate! Hurry! Woohoo! A 380 kilometer per hour Falcon dive. I got it, pal. You just be my wingman. Got it! Saving creature powers with creature powers! Oh! Ow. Oh no, gotta catch up to that disc. <laughs> Geronimo! Okay, let's find a stinky varmint to exploit in my next invention and get out of this yucky nature fast. Hmm, a giraffe elevator? Nah. Oh, oh! A zebra newspaper, ha-ha! <laughs> nah, don't worry, Zackbot. You never know when genius will strike this brilliant mind of mine. Ow! Oh! Aha! 
See? I told you a good idea would hit me. <laughs> Uh-oh. Zach Farmatech, inventor who makes robots out of animals. He's got the creature power disc. Now I can analyze this silly little disc, and then the secret to that creature power technology will be mine! <laughs> Oh. Ah, nice giant piggy thingy. Ah! Wow! Oh no, the disc. Hmm. Ah! Yikes! Gotcha. Woo! Close one. You okay, Zach? Ah, uh, yeah. Wow, now that right there is a territorial creature. Oh, those hippopotamus are amazing. No, that hippo platter or whatever is nuts. He's protecting his part of the river. That's what they do. They don't like anyone on their turf, and I mean anyone. Hey, did you get the disc? Well, Zach had it, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I was gonna give it to you guys, but then that hippo crazy thing attacked me. It's in the river. Oh, no. It could be anywhere. We've got to find it. Well, I wish I could help, but I, uh, I have to, uh, call my mother. You know how it is. Well, thanks for the rescue. You guys are great. <laughs> Bad news, gang. The power disc is lost. In the river. We know. We saw the whole thing. We've got to get it back. Yeah. But that's not gonna be easy. They don't even like sharing their river with a crossing zebra. And all the zebra's trying to do is get to the other side. Why in the world are hippos so defensive of their river? Why are they so territorial? Hello, I'm territorial too, about my inventions. And now there's one of my power disks out there, lost. If that disk gets into the wrong hands. Like Zack, who knows what bad things he'll use the disks for. Don't worry about that. We just saved him from the jaws of an angry hippo. Yeah, seems like Zach's had a change of heart this time. I'm not taking any chances. I'm sending in the hippo sub. Get ready for a search and rescue mission. Uh-oh, now we've done it. <laughs> See, I told you, a lion dad takes good care of his cubs. Whoa, that's got to be nature's biggest hairdo. Yeah, it's a magnificent mane. But there are a few animals who have even longer hair on their head. Muskox and yak are tied for third longest. Horses are second. The longest horse mane was measured at five meters long. And you know who, of all animals, has the longest hair on their head? Hmm. You do! Uh. When a human lets her hair keep growing, a human has the longest hair on their head in the creature world. The longest hair on any human was 16 meters long. <gasps> he who breathes fire. That's what we've got to call him. He who breathes fire. In the local Swahili language, that translates to Ane Pumua Moto. Ane Pumua Moto. He who breathes fire. Nobody is gonna mess with the pride with he who breathes fire as the guardian. He must be 180 kilograms and as big as a lion gets. Yeah, Ane Pumua Moto looks to be five years old and in his prime. And that's his job to guard the lionesses anywhere from two to 20, plus his cubs, from danger. Of the 36 species of wildcat, lions are the only ones that live in a big social group. A big old family. Uh, then where's he going? Mm -hmm. oh, all right, yeah! Woohoo! He's going on patrol! Every few nights or so, he'll patrol the pride's territory to make sure there is no intruder, like other lions around. He doesn't wait for trouble to come. He goes out to stop it. Yeah, but what if Trouble finds the pride while he's gone? Well, the lioness are tough, but if Trouble shows up that they really need help with, like a really big clan of hyenas or other male lions, the lioness will call for the lion and he'll come charging back. 
Saving the pride with the lion powers. Um, where's he going? Are you kidding? When a lion of a pride trots off to survey the territory, what do you think we do? Have a catnap in the Criterra? No way! We're going on lion patrol! Naturally. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> Marking his territory. Weird how a lion pees backwards. Male dogs lift legs, male cats spray backwards. Hey, while we track him, let's map his territory. Yes, because this termite mound is like a signpost on the edge of his territory, and his pee is like a message to other lions that says, Keep out. Trespassers will be attacked and maimed and in other ways have a very bad day. Uh, something like that. Engaging Map Actuator. While we track him, let's charge his territory, and we'll end up with a map of a Nepomumoto kingdom. <gasps> Looks like he's on the prowl. Let's move. They are so cute. Hey, you want to do something a little different today? Sure. This time, why don't we name all the lion cubs? Yeah, why not? And we'll surprise Martin when he gets back. I'll name him Lil Cubby. <laughs> and that one's El Cutissimo. 